Hey, what's up, everybody? Ryan McDonald here, and I am basically standing in front of MLG Day 3, Orlando, Florida, 2011. It's going to be an incredible day because it's Championship Sunday, and today's the day they're going to crown the king of Halo Reach, Call of Duty Black Ops, and StarCraft 2. So without further ado, let's see who's going to take this. The day started off with incredible matchups in each one of the three games. In the StarCraft 2 tournament, we got to see Greg Idra Fields and Choi Bomber Ji Song. Bomber and his fellow StarCraft 2 player Puma, both from Korea, were heavy favorites to win the MLG Orlando StarCraft 2 tourney, but as we'd find out, today was the day for upsets and surprises. With the StarCraft 2 section once again the busiest, Idra's battle with Bomber got a huge reaction from the crowd, especially when Idra took the match in dramatic style. At the same time, the Call of Duty Black Ops Championship match was getting underway, but with only one of the strongly favored teams in the championship. Team Optic, featuring the likes of Poofy and Big Timer, this again being the same team that took the grand prize at Call of Duty XP. Their opponents were Vendetta, a team no one seemed to expect to make to the final match considering they had competition like Envious and others. The little team that could almost did, as they seemed to rally back in the middle games, giving Team Optic a run for their money on Summit. Ultimately, with great play and teamwork, Optic took the championship 6-4, ending with a decisive victory on firing range during a search and destroy match. We got a little worried, yeah, we were getting down on ourselves, we lost those first two maps, but we know we've been in that situation before, just earlier when we played them in the day, we were down 3-0 to zero in Search and Destroy, came back, won the series, so we had a lot of momentum from that. We were confident, we played against those guys all the time, obviously they were an open bracket team and we were the second seed, so confidence was a key and a lot of momentum. I had a lot of clutch plays this event, um, against them, I know, I'm going to name, alright, I'll give you three off the top of my head. It was one playoff firing range, you know, I'm back, Wood, head glitch, waiting for kids to come around, there's a guy on bomb. Put shots into him, you know, I don't kill him. I go to reload, a kid rushes me, and I kill both of them at the same time. For you guys that want to see Optic play, my POV, the um, stream link will be twitch.tv slash proofy, so check it out. I mean, once we got up there, we knew they were going to be hot, so, and we, they played, they won the series with Sembius, so we knew they were going to come off strong, which they did. They took first two maps, but we warmed up, and then our domination uh, is really good, and we took it over, and then we just moved on from there. I just got the best shotgun in the game, kid. <laughs> the night moved on with an intense Halo Reach championship match between Infamous and Dynasty. While Infamous was favored to reach and possibly win the tournament, Dynasty had other plans. Continuing the trend of the day in terms of upsets, Dynasty took the Halo Reach championship and dominated in every aspect of the game. <laughs>
We were very confident. We practiced a lot. Um, and to beat the teams that have been beating us all season, it's just a great feeling. Uh, I knew we had it in us. I was just hoping that we play like we did online. Um, what about you, sir? Um, I think we showed what we did online here at the tournament. Were you, uh, do you think you guys surprised a lot of teams, a lot of people here? Um, yeah, I think everyone viewed us as, you know, not unless the team that was going to win, but um, I think we surprised a lot of people. Now, what does this mean for you going into Providence in about a month? Uh, pretty much that we want to win. It builds a lot of confidence for us, but we also know we can't slack off because other teams are going to be preparing really hard. It's true. How about, how about you, sir? Are you, uh, you're thinking about Providence and what this means going into that now that you guys are the champions here in uh, Orlando? Well, I wish this tournament was Providence because it's 25 Gs. Finishing the day, StarCraft II fans filled the entire room, bringing signs to cheer their favorite players on. Reaching the Grand Championship was Huck and MC, who had a little friendly trash-talking section before it started. Aside from the skill on display, setup here was especially exciting, considering the Korean players had a lock on StarCraft II victories since it was first introduced into the league. Once underway, Huck and MC banged out two incredibly fast rounds. Protoss was the race of the night, with Terran and Zerg getting knocked out of the competition. Huck won both rounds and sealed the victory to an overwhelming response from the crowd. I am on the way here, and this will commence the rush here from MC. As you can see, with no expansion, MC has no interest in tearing this game on further. His entire strategy will boil down to a very specific type of tank rush. It's the exact reason why Huck's response to this is to make pylons, make it obstruction, make it difficult to get close uh, to his units. Exactly, and he has a lot of stalkers right now. In fact, if you look at the unit count, he had 6 elements against 11 and 20 for stalkers against 14. Math dictates that Huck wins this one. We'll have to see if MC can pull out some amazing micro here. Hey, what's everybody? I am uh, standing by here with the grand champion of StarCraft II. Huck, how you doing, sir? Hi, I'm doing really good, obviously. <laughs> yes. Congratulations on the victory. Uh, every time I turned around today, you were in that booth. It was a long day for you. Uh, what were some of the toughest matches you had today? Um, I'd say the toughest match I had today was probably against uh, STC. I went 2-1, and uh, he has a very wide range of strategies, and you never know. He's kind of unpredictable, so uh, I guess I was most nervous against him, but uh, all the games were pretty tough. Now, at the end, it seemed like it, it, it kind of was not too bad for you. Did you know going in that that's exactly what you were going to do, or did it just work out that way? I asked my teammates and my manager how I should play. Um, I didn't know if I, I was up 2-1 going in the series, so I could take more risks, where I could just play standard, and I hope he took more risk, and then I just defended. Uh, I played standard. Uh, I think the more confident I get in my play, the more I'll win. I think I'm generally a better player than other players. <laughs> I know that sounds really cocky, but it's true. And uh, I just hope I can you know, continue to win. One of the things I saw you do today, right before a match, it seemed like you kind of like focus and kind of close your eyes and get your thought. What was going through your head and what were you doing? Um, lately, well, uh, when I first started StarCraft II, I had a lot of problems with my uh, mental state between games. I would stop breathing and stuff. And my team has just been reiterating that, uh, you know, sports psychology kind of things to stay calm, breathe, think about it, visualize things. And uh, that's just what I'm usually trying to do in the booth. What does it take? I mean, there's a lot of people playing StarCraft in the world. Nothing like what we just saw you do, but uh, what does it take to play on that kind of a level in terms of practice and playing? Like, what kind of commitment is it? Well, I consider myself one of the hardest workers in the game. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work. You have to have a certain mind to do it. Uh, there's a lot of common traits in, like, poker players and StarCraft players. It's uh, 
just a lot of time investment, a lot of hard work, and uh, hopefully if you're smart enough, you can do well. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the close to day three here at MLG Orlando 2011. It's a very short period of time before we actually end up in Providence, Rhode Island for the finals of 2011. And uh, we'll be uh, following it over to Providence. We hope you enjoyed the coverage and uh, look forward to next month when we bring you all the action from MLG Providence 2011, where they're going to have the final closeout for all three of these. So it should be fun. Hope you guys join us.